Hi, my name is Hector Acuna, and in this video, you're going to watch some of my progress and process in painting outdoors, um, otherwise known as in plain air, um, from life, from observation. I'm here in Morris, Minnesota, on a trip to teach my online painting course for the university in person for two days. So it's uh, the middle of April. Um, it's a Wednesday, it's my day off from teaching, and I thought it'd be fun to enjoy the really warm, sunny spring weather and do a painting outdoors. So um, I'm not gonna film the entire process because I don't have a tripod with me, but I'll make sure to pause every now and again and show you um, some updates on the painting. I'm thinking about maybe incorporating this train car with graffiti in the painting. We'll see if that ends up being my subject for this study. Um, I might go with something else, but I'll definitely stick around this um, industrial um, railway area right in town. So let's see what happens. I wasn't sure where I was allowed to park, so I ended up just kind of hiding behind this little snowbank in a parking lot. Um, and then I just walked across to check out and scope out the views around that, um, that train car there. And um, this happens a lot when I'm painting outdoors where if I don't like, if I'm not completely drawn to a scene but I know there might be something over there that could make for an interesting painting a lot of times I'll just park my car and walk over there and look around um, and half the time I don't find anything that I really like and I'll get back in my car and start driving away but um, today is a good example of you know really scoping out this the area making sure I'm allowed to park there where I don't see any private property signs you might be able to see there's a little red sign on that building that says private property but I think because there's two different driveways, I should be allowed to go and um, pull in over on that part of the parking lot and just park my car there. We'll see if anyone comes to kick me out. Um, hopefully not, but we'll see what happens. Okay, like I said, I'm in Morris to teach an online uh, painting course in person for the week. Um, I'm really excited because tomorrow on Thursday, the seniors in the art program are having their reception, their opening reception for their senior show. So it's a really exciting time to celebrate their hard work um, and just to, um, you know, be there to see their, their final capstone pieces in person. It's really um, a big deal. So I'm excited to be here for that. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Morris, Minnesota, it's about eight hours northwest from Milwaukee. Um, I'm leaving town on Friday morning, so it's nice to be able to come here, teach my class in person, um, meet up with the faculty again, and uh, have some time to explore the area through painting. So I brought my plein air painting backpack with my easel. Um, I also recently built this box that is a it looks like a pedestal but it's actually a prop for painting um, i've been exploring this concept of the body in containers um, sort of breaking the container through different holes so i thought it'd be really interesting to actually build a um, a prop sort of model for that image and i've recently started to explore setting it in outdoor settings and making the paintings in plein air um, so I think I might try that here and just see if I can get away with setting up my box somewhere near the train car. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set my stuff up and then I'll show you what, what the view looks like. So I really like this side that's in the direct sunlight over here. Um, I like these different angles of perspective and just the higher contrast between light and shadow. I first was looking at the side over there um, around this platform and everything was in shadow and the contrasts weren't very interesting in terms of shape and value. So I think I'm gonna go with something over on this corner. I'm gonna try to set my box up somewhere around that ladder or around the platform and just make it seem as if it belongs in the scene, so it doesn't stick out immediately, but where it's shown enough that um, it becomes a focal point in my view. So far, I've just set it up um, initially on this post here and kind of had it hanging off of the inside corner of my box. Didn't really like how it looked. 
obviously the box is really really bright in terms of its value and it really sticks out in the scene which i'm excited about because i know then it'll pull our eye to that part of the painting but um in terms of its placement i don't really know if that's the most interesting spot for it this is probably going to be close to the view that i'll end up picking for the painting um, maybe cropped in a bit more but um, i'm looking at this little log down here on the foreground i'm going to see if it fits in the hole of my box because in my studio i've been playing with the idea of hands sort of reaching out from inside the box um, I, i'm not sure how i want to incorporate that for the plein air pieces if that's something i'll do kind of in the studio after the paintings are done or um, maybe build or find some sort of hand or arm um, mock at or um, you know sort of uh, uh, what is it called um, from forgetting the name of the like sculptures that you put a mannequin maybe i can find like a used mannequin arm or something that i can travel with and put inside the box but i'm gonna try the log and see how this looks so you know a lot of this stuff is very uh new for my process and what's exciting about this is that i don't always know what's going to happen or how things are going to look but this would be a really good um substitute for an actual hand you know because i'm always curious about the effects of light and where the shadows are placed um, on different planes so this is actually a really useful object right now to be able to incorporate um, the effects of light hmm. i'm going to move the box around a few more times and then i'll i'll show you where i end up placing it once i'm once i'm ready Okay, so I think I like how it's set up right now. It feels very figurative, um, like this box has some sort of activity or energy about it um, with the way that that beam is hanging out of the hole. I also really like the shapes that the shadows make um, from that beam and how it doesn't quite touch the ground. Um, so there's some interesting kind of cuts between positive and negative space with the shadows on the foreground and then on the box itself. Um, now what I'm going to do, because uh, I, I also like where it's located from my vantage point right now, um, in the middle of the ladder and then this sort of electrical um, panel that's on the right there. And I have one of my viewfinders, my paper viewfinders that I use often in the field. And right now what I'm doing is looking through the viewfinder to see what would make an interesting level of cropping and how far out or in I should crop my composition. Um, depending on time, I might do a quick uh, graphite value sketch. Um, I have a couple different panels with me in my backpack there. Um, although I only have one viewfinder that matches the ratio of the panels that I have with me. I think I have two or three that are six inches by eight inches one that's like 10 by 10 inches and then i think i have one that's like three by nine inches and um, i think i only have a square one by one ratio and actually i think i have a one by three ratio i could do the long horizontal but honestly i think that a square format would fit this space really well um, and when i'm looking through the viewfinder i'm focusing on the big shapes that are dark to light so I like where the um, cement that is on the closest plane to us there that cuts horizontally through the picture plane. I like that big bright shape and how it interacts with the bright values of the box um, and then how the rest of the composition is fairly lower in value and darker in its, uh, in its value. So along the top there's a, a nice big long horizontal dark shape. I like how there's a small horizontal um, or sorry, vertical dark shape, kind of by the ladder there on the left side of the composition. Um, so this will probably be the composition for the painting. It's simple enough. There's enough big areas of shape where I can hopefully knock this painting out in two hours max. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, like I said, I'm just going to periodically take a break from painting and then show you my progress. Um, and then at the end of the painting, I'll probably do a wrap up and talk about the experience and what I'm thinking about the painting. So, all right, let's go ahead and get set up. 
So this is going to be my setup for today. I have my pallet box here hooked onto my um, camera easel that I bought from Amazon. It was used, I think originally it's like $80. I got it for $40 and I've used it all of last year um, and now going into 2023 it's holding up really really nicely. Um, what I like about it is that it has this kind of clamp system under here. So um, what I realized is that I could just um, screw in or epoxy glue pieces of hardwood that are the right width to fit in this clamp. And that seems to be a really, really um, sturdy and simple way to take different um, uh, boxes and easel designs on and off the um, tripod really quickly and easily and then this is a little cigar box that I um, have had for years at one point it was a little thumb box and I use it for panel paintings that are around this size or smaller and it holds up really nicely I'm hoping that maybe I have a clamp in my car um, that I can use to make sure that this doesn't blow over because it's just resting on the lid of the box right now um, and then I otherwise use this big wooden mast that I um, built last summer out of scraps from hardwood like walnut and oak and that's holding up really nicely too so I have really um, two pretty lightweight and durable options for holding my paintings um, outdoors and then my backpack clips onto one of these eye hook um, bolts that fit the size of the bottom of my tripod and I can just use a carabiner uh, clip to weigh down the easel to make sure that it's not going to blow over if it ends up being really windy. And I'm able to fit the pallet box and all of my supplies right in this backpack. My tripod just slides into that pocket and clips in. Um, I really like this REI backpack. It has plenty of space and pockets of different sizes to fit different things. Um, so I can quickly access things like my sketchbook and viewfinders. Um, so I'm going to go check my car and see if I have a clamp that'll fit this setup right now. Um, and I think I'm going to skip the um, thumbnail sketch phase just to, to save time and I can start to figure out what kind of colors I want to use in the painting. I've been exploring color a lot recently and thinking a lot about uh, limited palettes and different color schemes. So um, I'm either going to try to stay really warm or really cool with a few accent areas of the uh, temperature contrast. That's the plan right now. And then I'll likely try to keep the values pretty compressed as well. I've been really enjoying the um, limited contrast in value with painting in plain air. So those are the two kind of color palette um, themes that I'm currently thinking about and will likely become the structure for the painting. And um, this is a 10 by 10 inch masonite panel that I cut and primed with um, well, first uh, GAC 100 or GAC 100 from Golden as my sizing agent, and then two coats of acrylic gesso before um, a layer of uh, um, Williamsburg titanium oil ground, which I've really fallen in love with as a surface because the paint doesn't absorb and it really slides around pretty nicely on the surface of the panel. So um, that's what I'm painting on. Um, I have a bunch of paint in the van that I'll go grab and I'll be able to get started. So the bad news is that I don't think I brought any clamps or clips that are going to fit um, with my setup right now, which is kind of a bummer, but I do have a bunch of really strong ceramic magnets. And I think these should be able to do the trick, at least for moments when the wind really starts to pick up. Um, and while I was in here looking around for the clamp, something I thought about that I just wanted to mention too is that, you know, if you paint in plain air um, often like I do, one of the things you're always kind of conscious of and worried about is if you're allowed to paint where you've parked and where you're located. Um, and for me, I feel fortunate because the vehicle that I drive is often um, misinterpreted as some sort of work van or a city you know, some sort of like city work van. And uh, a lot of times people will come up and they'll see me setting up my easel with the mast. And, you know, they'll assume that I'm doing something for the city, um, some sort of zoning thing or construction thing, and typically leave me alone, which is really useful for me. And um, 
you know, I'm fortunate that that happens. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that if you're going to paint in plain air, um, you know, just be mindful that, um, you know, you, you're always at the mercy of whoever owns the property where you're painting from. And I've, I've been kicked off of properties before, um, which is understandable. And usually it's not a big deal, especially if I haven't started the painting yet. So sometimes if I'm in a public uh, place like this, I'll kind of hold off and wait to paint and just make sure that, you know, I don't notice anyone kind of eyeing me up from a distance to see if they're going to come over and kick me out. But you know, I've been here now for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes setting up and walking around and no one stopped by. So I think I'm pretty safe to paint here um, and I'll probably be left alone, hopefully. But uh, as you can see, I'm in just this big open parking lot kind of area right off the, um, the railroad that runs right through Morris. So we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful day. The weather is like mid 60s, sunny. The wind really isn't that bad, so I'm not too worried about my panel flying off. Um, and now I can really just start to focus on painting and making an interesting painting. So um, that's the plan. And hopefully I like the result. We'll see what happens. Okay, so this is how, uh, you know, this is how the magnets are set up. Um, I'm a little nervous to really push this. I don't want the magnets to fall into my wet piles of paint down here in my palette, but they're holding um, and I'm just going to leave them like that for now and, um, you know, work as close to this area of the panel as I can. But, you know, typically I would prefer to have a clamp here, but um, keeping magnets on hand is not uh, a bad idea, especially if they're small and pretty strong like these ones. Um, I think I got these on Amazon. So, um, yeah, just wanted to show what the magnet setup looks like. So I grabbed six brushes. Um, I don't know if I'll use all of them. I've been in the habit lately of trying to use the uh, fewest number of brushes possible to make a painting. Um, and I always try to pick a variety of between synthetic and natural hair brushes. I really enjoy these Kalinsky Red Sable brushes. Um, that have the orange handle. They're really, really soft and you can get some beautiful edges with those brushes. So typically I save those for the second half of the painting process. Um, and I'll use like this red handle synthetic flat or the bristle brush with the black handle here, the two bigger brushes to uh, really lay in the big shapes and big colors. And a lot of times because they're really rough hairs, you get some really beautiful surface qualities with the paint um, that's really organic and oftentimes holds a really interesting kind of energy in the painting. So those are the brushes I'm using. I have my palette knife here. I'm going to grab my paint. I'll probably just stick with like alizarin crimson or alizarin permanent from Gamblin, cad red light, uh, cad yellow medium, and um, titanium white. And maybe I'll just keep this uh, ultramarine blue here on the palette just to kind of cool off some areas or neutralize some of those warm tones. Um, I think that's going to be the, the starting palette. Um, and like I said, I'm going to try to keep my dark values more in the middle of the value scale to try to keep things a bit more high key in terms of value. Okay, that's enough talking. I'm going to set up my paint and start laying things in and then I'll, I'll show you what things look like at that lay-in stage. So I just noticed this moth or butterfly hanging out down by my bag of paints. It looks like a monarch butterfly. It's always great to see uh, little moments of nature coming into our process and allowing us to really appreciate just the everyday, you know, uh, privilege to be outside with nice weather and um, to really feel connected to the outdoors. So just wanted to share that with you too. So I just mixed up a little pile of this really warm orange with um, cad yellow medium, cad red light, and titanium white. And then uh, just to give myself a bit of a boundary or um, you know end of the dark value spectrum and then also the muted or achromatic spectrum, I mixed up a really um, violety kind of purple neutral with ultramarine blue, actually with all three of my, uh, or all four of my starting colors. And uh, this will give me a good guideline of 
where my limit is for my dark. So I'll probably start with this to block in my darkest areas. And then um, maybe even before that though, I might do like a really thinned out wash with this orange just to give myself a toned ground for the whole painting. So I'm thinning out that orange that I mixed up. Um, I'm trying not to use too much Gamsol. Um, I don't want that to get in the way of the more opaque layers of paint, but I also need to get rid of the white background of my panel. Um, that way I can not only create a more uniform surface in terms of color to work on, but it also helps me gauge my values a little bit better when I'm not working directly on a white background. So it's about one o'clock. Um, I have my panel all toned. I wiped the surface with my paper towel just to get rid of some of the Gamsol, but also to really even out the surface a bit more. Um, I have my two initial colors mixed up. Um, you know, now let's uh, see how long it takes to actually make the painting. Should be, should have everything I need now to actually start laying in the composition. Okay, so here's the painting kind of loosely blocked in. I've positioned things in the area that I think they're going to end up in based on what I can see. Um, you know, I've started to put in my darkest areas. Now I'm going to try to block in more of the middle values here. We'll see what happens. Well, the wind really picked up a few minutes ago and knocked my painting over. Luckily, I don't think the painting really was smudged or scratched or anything, but um, my magnets flew everywhere, my brushes flew off my um, you know, palette, and now I'm just gonna try, try this sort of setup, which really skews the perspective of everything. But, you know, sometimes you have to kind of make these sacrifices when you're outside um, and you forget to grab the right materials like the clamps. <laughs> but here's an update on the painting. I'm not sure how well you can see since the painting is still pretty wet, but it's starting to really get some of the key features and landmarks from the view into the painting, so I'm really happy about that. Um, right now I'm leaving this area uh, with the board just kind of empty. I like this idea that maybe that could become an arm with a hand interacting with an object or something. So. I'm just going to leave it blank, I think, and then maybe in the studio later today or tomorrow morning I can think of an idea or get some reference photos for that. So I'm just going to keep plugging away and um, try to keep this a bit playful and loose, but it's nice at this stage to start to get a sense of the color relationships in the painting where things are a bit more orange, a bit more violet, um, and where yellow and red can kind of pop in for some um, more intense moments in terms of the color.
Okay, so I know it's probably not the best um, lighting condition right now to show you this painting, but I think I'm pretty much done with the plein air portion of the painting. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I really like the composition and the compressed value structure um, and how the color relationships turned out. Uh, the wind really started to pick up in the last 30 minutes or so. Um, and uh, I'll just show you a quick close up here of where things stopped um, here outdoors. I was starting to get into some of the variation in the grass. Um, it's a little bit on a little bit of an angle right now. Um, and trying to build up more of the intensity in the yellow uh, to really catch the light in those areas and, and pop that warmth uh, highlight um, in some areas. I really like how the graffiti turned out um, from that distant wall past the ladder. Um, and just kind of the roughness of a lot of the marks. I think it has a great kind of architectural um, structure to the painting. I'm just checking my watch right now. It's two, just about 2.20. Um, so this was a little over two hours, um, which is what I was hoping for. You can probably hear another train coming down the tracks here in a few minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pack things up. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm probably just going to end everything here for the video. And um, if you'd like to see how the painting turned out, feel free to check out my Instagram account, hectoracuna.studio or hectoracuna.planair. Um, I have two different accounts, one for obviously studio and one for plain air, but um, this one's probably going to end up, I'm not sure yet, maybe on both accounts, we'll see. Um, but for sure you can see it on my website, acunaarts.com. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll try to make more of these in the future, and thanks for watching. Take care.